up to this point, you have had something that we call a source document, a receipt, maybe, for these $100 worth of supplies. And whenever I got that receipt, all the supplies was a debit and my credit was to cash. Right? And then, whenever I started to post into my ledger, I would post my date, my debit, my credit, right? To all of those accounts in my ledger. That's what we've done up to this point. Well, every, uh, every piece of paper that comes in the office, whether it's a purchase order or a receipt or an invoice or anything like that, those are called your source documents. But at some point, we have things that happen that, does, that doesn't have a paper trail. And one of the examples is with supplies. So we said I bought $100 worth of Expo markers. But you guys know what happens today with this blue one. It no longer works, does it? So it goes in the garbage. So as I throw that one away, what if these are a dollar a piece? Now do I have a hundred dollars worth of supplies? I only have ninety-nine dollars worth of supplies if they were a dollar a piece. So that means that I would have to, I used it, and anytime you use it, what does it become? An expense. So then, I would have spent a dollar more, which decreases my capital, and my supplies now balance out to 99. So then here comes pin number two. And pin number three. And is, do I really want to do it like this? No, I don't think so. And the reason is because every time that I do that, I'm in my journal, and I'm putting in my date, step one. I'm putting in my debit, supplies, expense, step two. I'm putting in my credit for step three. Then I'm putting in description, one expo, mo one expo marker, gone. <laughs> and I'm skipping a line. And then I'm having to post each one of those. I mean, you know, you could drive yourself insane doing that. Obviously, you're not going to do that. But you don't have a piece of paper that comes in that is telling you that I just used this. So instead of doing it this way, which is obviously certainly not an efficient method of keeping up with this, instead, what we do is what probably lots of you have done in different businesses that you had. We count it, called inventory. And we say, at the beginning of the month, I had $100. And at the end of the month, when I counted, I only had 60. Okay? Which means what happened during the month? I used up that. how many? 40. I used up 40. Is that pretty simple? So what I have to do at that point, this is called, and I'm not saying that this is an asset or a liability, I'm just writing at this blank spot on the board. This is called an adjusting entry, which is what chapter 5 is talking about. Because I don't have a piece of paper that came in, it's just that it, at the end of the month, I have to account for things that just happen in the night, so to speak. They just happen, and I have to account for it. Because if I said on my books that I had $100 of supplies, at the end of the month, do I really have $100 of supplies? I don't. So, you have to look at that then and say, if, depending on how I word it, if I said, I counted and my ending inventory is $60 worth of office supplies. Does that tell me what this figure is or is that telling me what my balance is? Which one of those? And by the wording that I just said, my ending inventory is $60. It's giving me my balance, isn't it? So how much did I use? 40. 40. So how much turned into an expense? 40. 40. 40. What about this? What if I instead, the instructions or the words on your problem said that I used $40 worth of supplies? Is that giving me this figure? No. no. So do I have to do any kind of subtraction? Or is it just giving me the answer? It's just giving me the answer, isn't it? And the instructions on 5 one says... On December the 31st, remember this is all happening at the end of the month that these adjustments 
have to be made. It's not during the month. I wait till the end. At the end of the month, the trial balance. What is it? What's it talking about? A trial balance. Trial balance means that's what my balance, my running balance is in that particular account at the end of the month is for $320. And I counted all of my supplies in my supply closet and I don't have $320 there. Instead, I only have $90 left with the office supplies. So what happened to the rest of them? I used them. So if I'm going to make an adjusting entry, how much did I use? 230. So you would have a 230 here, right? And a 230 here because my expenses went up by 230. By the way, can you just say, you know, I'm just not going to do these adjusting entries? Scratch that. Would your books be correct? No, because you've actually used that. You no longer own those. And you actually spent those, didn't you? So you have to account for these kinds of adjustments. You probably do that with your fuel. You know, you put gas in your car and you say, yay, I have a full tank of gas. You drive to school about three days. Then, guess what? You don't have a full tank of gas anymore. You have spent it. And you have to say, oh, I started here and now I have this much. <laughs> and you have to either find the difference or you may say, I used three quarters of a tank. Then you already have the amount that you've used. But whatever is missing in the middle is spent. And you have to account for that. Okay? Any questions? Our second adjusting entry that we're looking at today is going to involve prepaid insurance. Up to this point, when we purchased an insurance policy, and I'm just going to be using numbers that I can work with easily up here without thinking, but let's say we purchased a six-month insurance policy for $600. Everybody got what I just said? How long was our policy for? For six months, and how much did it originally cost me? $600. Now, am I purchasing insurance for last month? Or am I purchasing insurance for the future? So anything that's going to give me a future benefit is an asset. So whenever I made that purchase, what happened to my cash? Went down. Down, and it goes down with a credit. With a credit. Right? Yes. And I also have an account that I'm calling prepaid insurance, which is an asset because it's future benefits, and so it went up. And this is where I am at this point. Everybody agree? Yes. Now, another one of those things that just happens in the night. There's not going to be a piece of paper coming across your desk that says do this so that you know automatically to put it in your journal. Instead, you just have to know that this happened, okay? So at the end of the month, we're going to have to adjust this because what happens when the month is finished? Do I still have six months or do I only have five months? five months? Well, if I said this was for six months because I could really divide easily like that, that means that one month cost me how many dollars? hundred. Everybody agree with that? So now can I put on my balance sheet that I have, I own $600 worth of insurance? Or do I instead have to say, uh-oh, I only own $500 worth of insurance. So what do you think happens to the other hundred? Where is it going to go? So I have a new expense called insurance expense, right? And it's going to go here, and it's going to go here. So now my new balance is... Uh -huh. over here, right? Yes. Thumbs up, we agree? Now, could this be just like that supplies and it could be so stated in a way that just isn't going to compute sometimes? In other words, they may say the amount of insurance that is expired or they may word it to say the amount of insurance that is unexpired. So if you hear the amount of insurance that is unexpired, what would that one be? Unexpired is what we still have. Would this be unexpired? Yes. And this would be expired. expired? 